Hi everybody, uh, my name's Jenny and I'm going to be your advanced viola tutor at the first ever virtual Benedetti sessions. Um, so uh, I just thought I would take this opportunity to give you a sort of lay of the land over the next three weeks um, and then in particular focus on the Vaughan Williams Fantasia on a theme of Thomas Tallis. So as I understand it, um, every Wednesday we are going to have a live Zoom tutorial. 45 minutes where unfortunately all of you guys will be um, unseeable and unhearable unless you are very brave and um, would like to be heard and seen um, for perhaps a little kind of mini masterclass situation yes or no I mean whatever you like um, and then on Mondays there'll be a video much like this which will focus mostly on the Vaughan Williams and then on the Friday equivalent similar sort of sized video we will focus on the Paganini, which is the other piece of repertoire we're going to focus on. Now that Paganini is amazing, it's been arranged, it's a caprice for violin, it's been arranged uh, by the amazing Ayub sisters for loads of different levels um, and it just it covers all sorts of different techniques and technical things in a really fun way so the idea is just to use that as a kind of vehicle to improve ourselves and have fun um, and that is going to be spoken about in the next video. So to start with I just wanted to say a couple of things. Firstly, that the stakes are not only allowed, but very much encouraged because mistakes are the way we learn. And I would love for this to be an opportunity for us to kind of get out of our uh, self-isolated, like stuck inside, stuck looking at screens headspace and basically observe things about ourselves and about the way our brains work, our bad habits, our good habits, all that sort of stuff with a really objective and calm mind. And I know from experience that that is very much easier said than done. I have a terrible habit of being incredibly impatient with myself, but it's that kind of thing that we would be amazing if we could really think about over the next three weeks and just, if anything gets too annoying, too difficult, we just press pause and put our instruments down and go for a walk. That is totally great. Um, I should also highlight that if there's any, ever anything that you want further help with, your teachers, um, I'm sure and I hope, would be really happy to help and I would very much encourage you to talk to them about anything that we discuss here um, because the more information you have, the better and it would be fantastic if they could all be involved as well. Um, so, um, before we actually get into any playing, I would encourage you, if you haven't already, to look at the warm-up video page. Now, the warm-up video page is a magical place because that's a place where we can become one with body and mind before we start working, which who doesn't want that? And there'll be loads of different videos on different subjects and topics, different kinds of things to get ourselves in the mind's, mind zone. Uh, don't just look at the viola ones, I'm sure all the different instrumental ones will be relevant in their own ways. So I very much encourage you to do that first. But now on to the Vaughan Williams. So before we do any playing, I'm sorry you're going to listen to me talking for a tiny bit longer. Um, there are these introduction videos to the piece, which will be released today, Monday, um, but equally I would just like to mention a couple of things that I think have a particular relation to the way we interpret it with our instruments. So um, Vaughan Williams was a huge lover of chorale music and the Renaissance, um, and he actually came back from studying with Ravel in Paris before he, he wrote this. And if you listen to the original psalm that this whole work is based on, the original Thomas Tallis psalm, which is why it's called Fantasia on a Theme of Thomas Tallis. It's called Psalm Number Two, um, and it's called Why Fumeth in Fight. Um, if you listen to that, you will hear the most beautiful shifting fluctuations, major to minor, which I'm sure is one of the reasons that it appealed so much to Vaughan Williams, as well as this kind of very elastic sense of time and it's just a really spectacular work. I would highly recommend that you go on YouTube and find a recording of, of the original chant. Um, and actually that's the word that I wanted to pick up on in particular because it is originally for the spoken word for a chant to be sung. And when we play this music with our instruments, I would love to find that sort of spoken intimacy in our bows and in our spirits when we play. I think that would be amazing. Of course, it's not relevant always. Sometimes it's much more rhapsodic and, and instrumental and chordy, but um, sometimes we need to really focus in and just imagine that we're singing a really intimate chant in a church somewhere far, far away. Um, 
I would also very much recommend you listen to three, four, five different recordings of this Fantasia on a theme of Thomas Tallis in its entirety, just to get a sense of all the different ways it can be interpreted. Um, we are going to be lucky enough to play um, with this incredible conductor, Karina Kanalakis, who I believe um, there are links to under this video um, to find her conducting in silence. So we will have her interpretation to follow. Um, and there'll be bits of this video too, and also on Wednesday when we'll talk about um, how to kind of get that nuance of her movements and her breathing into our playing and how to respond to that. So that's going to be really interesting. It's also fantastic that you guys are going to be so close up to the conductor because sometimes, you know, and I've had this too, we're right at the back of the section, you're about 100 feet away from them and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do with that? So now we've got, we're going to have her right up on your computer screen, maybe with me in a tiny little box in the corner would be ideal. And um, then we can go from there. But anyway, I should just also touch on the fact, I'm sure you're aware, that on your music it says Viola Orchestra 1, which implies that there are more than one orchestra, and indeed there are two, as well as a solo quartet. Um, and it's really amazing that Vaughan Williams decided to orchestrate this piece that way, and he's what he's doing is uh, remembering this ancient um, compositional trick called Cori Spezzati, where um, church composers would space their ensembles their ensemble throughout the church and get this incredible like natural surround sound um, for the congregation they're listening and it's a really magical and very nostalgic way to for Vaughan Williams to have um, orchestrated this work. We only have to worry about Viral Orchestra 1 um, but I should also mention that we are going to be looking at both the upper and the lower lines so I leave that to you guys to decide which you would like to play. Uh, they're both equal, equally easy, difficult, I mean they're very, they're pretty much the same, just different notes. Um, a couple of places they do vary and at that point I would just ask you guys to be patient while I talk about one versus the other. Um, you can be practicing your own stuff, such as the beauty of the pause button, the fast forward button and mute and all those magical computery things. So um, without further ado, we're going to talk about the music. So. Um, Looking at the very beginning, we can see that it says Largo Sostenuto, Pianissimo, Molto Sostenuto. Largo, of course, is broad, very slow, and the Sostenuto, both in the tempo marking and also in that little extra thing with the Pianissimo, just means that he wants everything incredibly sustained. So, um, for the top line, I would maybe recommend starting in second position. Uh, and for the bottom line, fingering-wise, do whatever you're most comfortable with. One option could be just going up the C string, that kind of thing. But do whatever you like, as long as you mask any bow changes as beautifully as possible. And we'll talk more about bow changes in warm-up videos and probably also on Wednesday, Friday and beyond. Um, but for now, uh, let's just feel as though, most crucially, in anything that's quiet, um, and that kind of inig um, sort of chant thing that we kind of touched on earlier um, has this incredible lightness and physical lift actually. Let's imagine that there's almost like a warm gust of air keeping our instruments up and generally a lovely lightness to everything that we do. So um, I will just play the top line just as an experiment. <laughs> I'm not actually looking at what Karina's doing at the moment and for memory I think she takes a bit of time over the bar line there and um, we'll do it with her properly on Wednesday but um, just really have that sense of space that would be amazing uh, and uh, just going on quickly let's talk um, about oh sorry while we're on the subject of lightness and lift bars 6 to 8 and um, 11 to 13, just those two little interjections, it's exactly the same physical sensation of this lifted viola. So um, let's also be thinking of our bow distribution and the lightness of how we get those hairpins in, but let's just try something like... I hope you'll be able to have seen there that I'm using more bow for the growth and less bow for the decay. Um, and of course that applies whenever there's a hairpin, really, ever. Um, now, the pizzicato 
pesante. I love that marking because it just sounds peasanty, and I think essentially it is. It's grounded and solid. So for that, we need to get the fleshiest part of our finger. I know people pits with different fingers. You can use whichever one you're most comfortable with. I would use my first. But crucially, we need a really, really solid left hand. So a lot of lovely weight in our left hand, please. And let's get to the most resonant part of our strings, which is halfway down our string around there. Definitely not too near the rosin or we'll just get sticky fingers and nobody wants that. So let's hear that also with a bit of vibrato, please. And you can experiment beautifully with the most resonant place on your viola um, and with which finger and which bit of the string and everything. Just really use your ears to guide you. That's a crucial, crucial thing always. Um, now, let's just quickly jump through. I know we haven't got much more time with this. At C, you'll see a lot of chords um, and that also happens um, over uh, towards the end somewhere, I think. But let's, um, when we're practicing our chords, really go slowly and always tune to the open strings, find the perfect fourths, perfect fifths, those perfect oct octave intervals. And it sounds stupid, but do make sure that you tune your violas really well. I don't want to patronize you, obviously, but there are these amazing apps you can get, which I use all the time, which tells you really specifically um, the frequency of your A, if it's 4-4, four, four, one or two. I think generally, actually with this, we're gonna be aiming for 4-4-2. Four, four, um, and then you can check your D, Gs and Cs so that they're all perfectly, resonatingly, perfect fifths apart and it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, so, let's just see. Oh yeah, with, the, with those broken chords, just one quick word about those. Let's not have any whipped bows. I know it's quite tempting sometimes if you see lots of notes in a chord and you're like, oh my God, that has to get over really, really quickly. No, let's really enjoy them. And I had a bit of a crunch there, sorry, so. With a chord that spread slowly, we want to aim to break the chord at the kind of bouncing point of our bow, which is like a third of the way up, that kind of magical moment. Something like that. Just really be mindful of, of how broadly we can break those three note chords. Now, just jumping on to the latter half, the latter chunk that we're doing of this piece. Um, oh yeah, 190, bar 190, this molto adagio, forte pesante again. We want as much downward motion as we possibly can. So I would recommend doing this up on the C string. <laughs> tenuto quavers and then really grade your diminuendo um, as it goes down and that's a lovely one because yeah it comes it comes out of a really qu really quiet intimate moment and suddenly it's this like force of nature upon us um, when we get to you I don't know how it looks in the music that you're reading from but do ignore the solo viola part just focus on the tutti part so that's all this stuff that's tremolo. Sur la touche, it says, and in French that means, it sounds like it means on the touch. Forgive me, my French is terrible. But the touch, of course, is the fingerboard, because that's where we touch the instrument. So it just means on the fingerboard. So we want to be right up there. Um, and it's also pianissimo. So let's not just do automatic pilots on the fingerboard, but find a way of get reducing the amount of bow that we're using, Think also about the number of, of oscillations or the number of strokes per um, note. So if it's a slow trem or a fast one, you could vary it for this kind of ultimate shimmer. Um, and then when we reach the 6-8 bar in bar 210, where it says naturale, that just means um, stop being on the fingerboard. You can come back to being on the bridge so we can get as much noise as we possibly can for that forte um, into X, fortissimo actually as it is. Now, um, this is all very similar stuff, technically speaking. So I think that's all that's really left to say um, is to have fun, have a lovely slow experimentation with all this music between now and Wednesday when we sort of meet on Zoom. Um, yeah, just the slower and the more 
consciously you can approach this, the better. If you have any questions, do ask your teachers or make a list of things to ask me. Um, I know we haven't had that much time in this video to really look in detail at technical stuff that will come. Uh, but for now, yeah, I would just encourage you to listen to it, look at it slowly, listen to yourselves and experiment. And don't forget that there are no serious mistakes that you can really make. Just keep listening and learning and growing and then you can't fail. Amazing. So anyway, I look forward to sort of meeting you guys on Wednesday and until then, enjoy. See ya.